In previous video, we saw how electrical equivalent battery can be created with the help of open circuit voltage and internal resistance. We saw how using power demand and auxiliary consumption of an electric vehicle, we can calculate and relate voltage and current using open circuit voltage and internal resistance in our resistive model at a given state of charge and temperature. In that video, we consider a very simple circuit which is trying to replicate battery behavior, which was a resistive model. Resistive model is also known as rent model. An extension to resistive or rent model is Thevenin model. So what is Thevenin model? Let us understand that in more detail in this video. So the image on the left is a Thevenin model. Thevenin model consists of open circuit voltage, ohmic resistance, R0, and slow response due to dynamic behavior, which is captured by RC branches. You can have one, two, three, all the way to five RC branches. And on the right, you can see a current pulse. So there's a zero current followed by a positive current pulse, which represents discharge, followed by a rest for a few minutes, followed by a negative current pulse, which indicates charge, and then rest again. For the given current pulse, at the bottom, you can see a voltage response of a, of a battery. So you can see different color coding. There's a constant region, which represents open circuit voltage. Then there's a sudden drop represented by blue, which is defined by the ohmic resistance R0. And then there's a nonlinear region, which corresponds to diffusion and charge transfer resistance, which is captured by RC branches. If we go back to the previous equation, V is equals to OCV minus IR. You can see as current is zero, this term goes to zero, which leads us with OCV. So the terminal voltage is equal to open circuit voltage. If current is positive, V would be less than OCV, which is true here. And if V is negative, which is for charge, then if I is negative, which represents charge scenario, then the voltage becomes greater than open circuit voltage because the minus is turned into a plus due to negative current, leading us to a voltage rise, which again represents the same behavior, a sudden rise followed by a nonlinear rise and drop respectively. So, Having said that, let us understand why do we need the slow response and what happens if we don't have these this RC branches. In that case, if there's no RC branches, it would be a square wave voltage response. So the voltage would look something like this. It would drop suddenly and then rise back suddenly based on the current value. Similarly, during charge, this would be the behavior. Now, this is fairly inaccurate assumption. There's a big difference here, for instance, between the actual voltage and the simulated or predicted voltage. So to fill this gap, we need additional RC branches. Now, let us understand what R and C represent. So the total internal resistance is ohmic resistance plus charge transfer resistance plus diffusional resistance. Now, in case of a lithium ion battery or cell, during discharge, lithium ions transport from anode to cathode. And initially, the lithium ions would be trapped within the anode particle. They need to diffuse so let's consider a cell. 
consisting of current collector on the extreme end, separator in the middle and then this is anode, this is cathode. Let's consider one particle. Initially lithium ions would be trapped somewhere inside. They need to first diffuse to the surface. This will lead to diffusional resistance and then they'll travel through the electrolyte to a cathode particle where they'll first attach to the surface and then slowly diffuse inwards. So there's a charge transfer which means there's a transfer of lithium ions between anode and electrolyte and then electrolyte and cathode. So lithium ions are transported from anode to cathode during discharge. This is charge transfer resistance and then the diffusional part would have its own resistance as well. So there comes another component called diffusional resistance. So the last two processes as you can intuitively think would be a slower process compared to ohmic resistance. This is mostly due to the electrical resistances which is a sudden drop and spontaneous. So we have three different components. To capture these three components, let's consider a 1RC branch. So ohmic resistance would be captured by R0. Charge transfer resistance and diffusional resistance would be captured by R1. Whereas the double layer capacitance and diffusional capacitive effects would be captured by C1. So here R1 and C1 together represent charge transfer and diffusional resistance or capacitance. Now as we add more and more RC branches, we get more flexibility in assigning the roles of capturing charge transfer and diffusion. So now instead of one single component capturing or one single RC branch capturing the entire slow response, we have individual branches responding to individual effects. So the first RC branch would correspond to charge transfer resistance. So R1 and C1 represent charge transfer resistance and double layer capacitance. Whereas the second RC branch in a 2RC circuit represents diffusional resistance and capacitance. So this is how you can more accurately capture the effects and and capture voltage response more closely. In general, a 2RC system is a good trade-off between accuracy and runtime. As you keep on increasing the RC branches, it might give you more accuracy, but it comes with a cost of more computationally expensive solution. When you're solving, there is more time required for the electrical solver to, to evaluate and give you a numeric solution. So this slide highlights how, what is the significance of each component. Now let us do a quick exercise to understand how you can calculate these circuit parameters. Just keep in mind these are approximations to give you a rough estimate of the, of the circuit parameters, but for more accurate, more accurate Reverse engineering, you need to do optimization studies. You can vary R0, R1, C1, and then compare the voltage response from your model versus test data, and then keep changing the R0, R1, C1 values uh, and reduce the error between the test and model. So this is how you iteratively arrive at an optimal solution. But for now, let's do a quick calculation. Uh, this will give you at least a ballpark value of these circuit parameters. So we assume a capacitance, a capacity of 25 ampere hour for this for the cell. A C rate of C by 5 is applied. So we give a pulse for 15 minutes of 5 amps and then bring the current back to zero. For the given current pulse at the bottom, you can see the voltage response. Now there are different segments. For example, this segment here represents the ohmic resistance, delta V0. 
the total rise or recovery is given by delta v infinity so now first let us understand how we can calculate these factors so the first outcome would be r naught you can see delta v0 can be calculated by the difference of the two voltage levels it's 3.98 minus 3.93 which can be related to r0 times delta i delta i is nothing but the current difference or the pulse value so it's 5 amps we have one equation and one unknown so we can get r0 which is equals to 10 milliohms the second relation is delta v infinity which is roughly equal to 4.05 minus 3.93 if we do the math you'll end up getting r1 since delta v infinity r0 and delta is already known so you end up getting r1 equals to 14 milliohms now you can make an approximation and it's a thumb rule that it takes roughly five time constants for the voltage to stabilize so in order to go from this to this it takes roughly 40 minutes which can be equated to 5 rc rc represents time constant so it takes five time constant to stabilize now we know r1 we know this distance which is 40 minutes so 40 minutes can be equated to 5 times r1 c1 to get c1 now r and c are in ohm and farad so ohm times farad will give you time in second so we need to convert 40 minutes to second which is 2400 finally you end up getting c1 equals to 34.286 kilofarad so this is how you can estimate circuit parameters in a Thevenin model for more accuracy you can go for curve fitting and reverse engineering through iterative solution so that's it for this video i hope this was useful to give you some background about how Thevenin model works and how you can estimate the circuit parameters